What's going on guys? It's Nick here, back with another video. This has been one of the most requested breakdowns at the running back position, and I wanted to do it as well because I really had no idea what my answer was. Going into this, I have Eckler as a running back 10 and Akers as a running back 11, both in tier two, both with low risk grades, and both listed as targets. So definitely need to go over this one because a ton of you are gonna face this exact position in the second round this season, and I wanna make sure we have a good understanding of what we're gonna do if that ends up being the case. Before we start though, have to start things off as usual with the stat of the day. Yesterday's stat, how many running backs finished with four plus targets per game last season? The answer is actually 18, a bit higher than most of you thought. And Jacob Massett was the first to get that right on both Twitter and on YouTube. We're actually starting something new now with the stat of the day. Once you answer it correctly 10 times, on a format, so on YouTube or on Twitter, you're gonna be added to the Hall of Fame for that format. You can still answer if you want to, but your name is always gonna be on the screen, your name or your Twitter handle again, whichever one you've answered correctly first 10 times in. It's a way to reward you for getting a bunch right, but then also giving you know other people a chance to win. So right now, Jacob Massive on Twitter has made it, and then both John Jacobs and Jacob Massive, bunch of Jacobs here, are very close on YouTube. So something to shoot for. Answer the stat of day correctly first. You're going to get a point. See if you can make it into the Hall of Fame by the end of the season. Today's stat, who converted the most two-point conversions last season? Not a quarterback, a skill player. So who had the most two-point conversions last year? All right, so let's get into this breakdown. And first up, we're going to go over Austin Eckler. Fun fact about Eckler. He has never been over 560 rushing yards in a season. But that hasn't stopped him from finishing as a running back 7 and 13 over the last two years. The early down workload, though, like that's that's not what we're after with Eckler, right? We're after these receptions. Over these last two years, he's averaged 5.8 receptions per game. You heard that right, not targets. 5.8 receptions per game over the last two years. That is wild. And if we look at the Chargers this season, there's no reason we should expect things to go differently. I mean, Herbert should take a step forward this season, but even if he doesn't, he was great as a rookie, and that sort of production would be more than enough. Then we look at the depth chart, and it's Eckler at the top, then Justin Jackson, who's really just a career backup. Joshua Kelly, who was benched last season for Kalen Balage, Pretty embarrassing there. And then their sixth-round rookie, Larry Roundtree. I mean, I'm not concerned about someone who was worse than Balage and a guy named Larry Roundtree, right? Like, these are not players we're concerned about if we own Austin Eckler. I mean, Eckler is going to dominate the touches in this backfield with a receiving game workload that very few running backs could possibly match. I mean, he has a ceiling that maybe five running backs could hit. That's kind of crazy. That's a really nice player to draft. And that's why he also has one of the lowest risk grades among running backs because the only real way he can bust is injury. I mean, think about a scenario where Austin Eckler busts. Because even if, and this is the biggest negative people throw out there is the touchdowns. Even if the touchdowns he has like four on the season, that'd be pretty low, right? Okay, but if he's pairing that with like 80 receptions and some work on the ground, the touchdowns don't even matter. He's still going to be a high-end running back. But let's go over the touchdowns because that is absolutely the biggest thing with him. And it's because he doesn't get all that much goal line work, right? I mean, he's played 25 healthy games over these last two seasons, and he's only been given nine carries inside the five-yard line. In 2019, Melvin Gordon had 13 compared to Eckler's seven. And then last season, Kelly and Belage had five and six respectively, and Eckler only had two. And while part of that was due to the injury, because Eckler was kind of hurt for part of last season, it's not like Kelly and Belage had full snap shares Either. I mean, Balaj was on a different team for part of the season. It was actually Herbert, if we kind of look at it, who was the biggest risk inside the five-yard line. I mean, he had seven carries inside the five-yard line, scoring four touchdowns. 
You know, we talk about uh, Lamar Jackson stealing rushing touchdowns. Well, how about Herbert? I mean, Herbert had more rushing touchdowns inside the 20, the 10, and the five yard line last season than Lamar Jackson did. And I'm not saying that Herbert is like as good of a runner as Lamar Jackson. No one is. But in terms of stealing touchdowns, yeah, we should probably actually be considering Herbert in that group of players that are quarterbacks. We're concerned about stealing touchdowns from the running back. So the real threat might not be Justin Jackson and Joshua Kelly. might be his quarterback. But regardless of who we're blaming, the fact is, yes, his rushing touchdown upside is capped. But remember the receiving game. That's why we like Eckler after all, right? Like over the last two seasons, Eckler has two fewer targets inside the 10-yard line than Mike Williams, right? Like we need to consider Eckler almost a wide receiver on this team as well. Of course, he's going to get a ton of carries and he's not going to have too many goal line carries. But if we're considering him as big of a touchdown threat as Mike Williams, well, now he might only need two or three rushing touchdowns in the season because he could have four, five, six receiving touchdowns. I don't really care which one happens. And in general, actually, if you're playing in a half or full PPR league, you'd prefer a receiving touchdown because he at least gets that point or half point for the reception. Also, last season was still a little bit unlucky for him. Again, I've laid out why I do agree he's a limited touchdown ceiling. But he only scored a touchdown on one out of every 56 touches last season compared to his career average entering the year of one touchdown every 20 touches. So sure, he's not going to lead the league in touchdowns, right? But he was still pretty darn unlucky last season and people are going to underrate his touchdown ceiling because of that. So I do think Eckler is a very safe pick and I do think he's a ton of upside because he could have a hundred receptions and he could have five receiving touchdowns go along with a few rushing touchdowns and could easily push into double digits for that even if he's not getting super lucky. So I'm going to keep him as a target, think he's a quality pick, but what about Akers? Because the video is breaking down Akers versus Eckler. If you had that draft decision, who do you take? Well, if you've been following us this offseason, then you know I love him too. Mainly because of how much they used him last season and because of how good I think this offense is going to be. So if you remember back to last offseason, we were talking about Akers and Henderson and how Either of them would probably be a smash in fantasy if they were featured, but that we couldn't really know if either would be. It could be a really big split. And for a good chunk of last season, it was a split. In week one, we saw Brown get 60% of the snaps compared to 33% for Akers, 7% for Henderson. Then we see Akers get injured in week two, and we see Brown and Henderson operate as close to like 50-50 split, although I'll say that um, kind of earlier in the season, you know, Brown was getting a little bit more work than Henderson. Then Akers returns, looks great in week five, gets hurt again, misses two more weeks. Then he returns and he only saw about 20 to 25% of the snaps over that next month when he came back. So now we're at week 13 and it is just a complete and utter mess. Like these three are splitting the workload Sometimes it's one guy, sometimes it's another guy getting like 40%, but no one is even close to dominating. But starting in week 13, things completely changed. Akers takes over as the feature back, finishing the season, averaging nearly 24 touches per game, including 20 or more carries in four of the remaining six weeks, playing 72% and 96% of the snaps in their playoff game. And all of that was after just turning 21 last June. You know, fast forward to the offseason, Malcolm Brown leaves in free agency to join the Dolphins. And McVay says that Akers is an every down back literally a month after successfully deploying him as an every down back. So Cam Akers is probably going to be amongst the league leaders in carries this season. And he reminds me a lot of kind of what we expect from Nick Chubb. You know, neither of these guys are Christian McCaffrey. They're not pairing 20 carries with 10 receptions, right? But Akers is a workhorse, and he's more than capable in the receiving game. So I mentioned Nick Chubb. Everyone knows Nick Chubb gets a ton of carries, and he's not going to be, you know, amongst the league leaders and targets. 
But he's fine in that area. Like He can absolutely have spiked weeks where he has a good amount of receptions. And things could definitely go his way in a season where he gets a little bit lucky in that area. I think that's very similar to Akers. I'm not expecting him to have 70 receptions. But he's capable as a receiver. And he could absolutely be used more than we think in that area. And that could be especially valuable this season. Because like I said before, I think the Rams are going to be fantastic this season. And Vegas does agree with me. I mean, only the Chiefs, Ravens, Bucks, and Bills have a higher projected win total right now. The Rams are absolutely just a force to be reckoned with this season now that they've upgraded from Goff to Stafford. And they get to pair that offense with an incredible defense. And so we're in a situation where they're going to lean on Akers a lot. He's going to be used a lot throughout the game. Their defense is going to keep teams scoring down. And so there's going to be a ton of games where late in the fourth quarter, they're up by like two scores and they just lean on Akers to close out the game. And you know what the icing on the cake is? Warren Sharp has his initial forecast, his strength of schedule numbers out, and it has the Rams with the second easiest projected run defense schedule. Their overall schedule is like middle of the road, but only the Broncos have an easier projected run defense schedule than the Rams. So we have a workhorse running back on a team with an elite offense, an elite defense, an easy run schedule with a head coach that has shown a willingness to feature him last season. And then he performed very, very well when he was being featured. And there's all indications pointing towards that's going to happen again this season. Those are the players who have league winning upside in their range of outcomes and who have a very, very high floor as well. So there's a breakdown of both of them. Who do I draft? I'm on the clock right now. Who am I taking? Initially, I had Eckler first. The 100 reception ceiling is insane. Like I said, not very many running backs or will ever be capable of that. But basically everything else does favor Cam Akers, I mean, he's on the better offense and offers much, much more rushing and yardage upside. Uh, I know that you'd rather have receptions, but the rushing upside of Akers is significantly higher than Eckler, and the touchdown upside is significantly higher as well, and it's not like Akers is a zero in the receiving game. You know, we're not talking about J.K. Dobbins here. You could literally have 15 receptions on the season. Akers is still fine in that area and he could still produce uh, given the opportunity and I think they could give him the opportunity because who's to say Stafford doesn't throw him the ball a little bit more than Goff did so I am moving Akers over Eckler in the rankings which of course you can see at our website thefantasyfootballadvice.com but it's not by like a ton you know I mean I'm really just flipping those two I still have them both the targets I still think you should be going after both of them. Also, I'll put the results from the other breakdowns on the screen now, uh, or at least at some point in the video, and I will link those videos in the description of this one. So if you want to see one of those, I don't know how many we've done, maybe like five to seven breakdowns, you want to see those, uh, I'll link them in the description box as well. But that, my friends, is the end of this one. Hope you all did enjoy. If you did, then how about hitting that like button, and how about subscribing to the channel if you're new? Thanks for watching.